Welcome to today's masterclass on how to connect ShipStation with your Deco Network account and then how to connect your Deco Network account within ShipStation and then just some basic tips and tricks for uh, making shipping as efficient as possible when using ShipStation. So the first thing we need to do is connect ShipStation so we can generate live shipping rates. You should always look at ShipStation or shipping as it's two individual steps. One is to be able to quote the customer a shipping rate when they're at checkout or they're on um, your website. So if I came here, I added the Gildan 5000 shirt, Deco Network knows how much this shirt weighs, approximately how much space it takes up in a box when it's folded so that we can generate a live shipping rate. So how do we do this? Well, if we go back into our admin settings, shipping methods, we can manage live shipping carriers, add live shipping carrier. And before the ship station integration, you would typically do this per carrier, um, but ship station makes it real easy. And really they are the biggest and best software for creating shipping labels. So I'll come into ship station and connect it. And what ShipStation needs is an API key and a secret key. So if you go into your ShipStation account, account here, my profile, or, um, oh, where'd you go? Account, my profile. And typically we will see API settings, generate API keys, and now I can grab the key and the secret key and paste them in here, which is gonna allow us to again, generate accurate rates. So I'll test it. Anytime you can test it before saving, do. So now we'll save that. Then I can choose shipping methods. And this is where I can choose between UPS, post office, FedEx. What different methods do we want to use for both or all of them? So I always have first class and priority mail, UPS ground. Then I could have other things like next day and so forth. So we'll just choose our shipping methods we want to offer. And if we go back into all shipping methods, here they are. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. One, when you add that shipping method, you'll see that all of them defaulted to the max delivery days of one. We need to update that. The other thing you'll notice is they're in a certain order from top to bottom. This is very important because when your customer is checking out or you're putting another quarter order in Business Hub, you want it to default to the most popular method. Now, when it comes to the post office, the two most popular are first class and priority mail. First class becomes unavailable after one pound. So if customer just wants to buy one shirt and they want the cheapest shipping method, first class is typically the option. But once that order gets over one pound, it becomes unavailable. So that's why I always make it my default. And then we want to set the maximum delivery period. So first class mail could take up to five business days. And that's why we'll set it to five. And then it's very common to set a markup for shipping methods. We want to account for any handling or packaging cost. So I typically see anywhere from 10 to 20% markup on a shipping method. So come into priority. Looks like it was using what I had before. Three, make it 20%. Now, just like with any shipping uh, method, you can choose where it's available. So if I don't want to make it available on stores, only business hub, I can. Or if I want to make it only available in uh, on specific stores, I can. What you can't do is have multiple versions of a live shipping method. For example, I can't have two UPS ground versions say, I want to mark this one up 10%, this one up 20%. I want to use this one on these stores, this method on others. You just can't do that. Um, what you can do within a shipping method is you can also make it free at a certain point. So I could say, okay, 
after $200, this method becomes free. We're not looking at the weight and dimensions. We're just making it free after that point. And when the customer's building a cart, they can see how close they are to free shipping, but that'll be for your default shipping method. You can also choose to not even make it available until a certain uh, dollar amount is meant. So, you know, if I want to say, okay, it's free at 200, but this isn't even seen as an option until you have a cart of at least $100. Now, what's not related to shipping that I want to talk about real quick are customer pickups. So if you offer customer pickup, you're going to make a custom shipping method. You're going to make sure that typically it prices at zero, may, or maybe you do have a handling uh, cost. You're going to want to choose where it's available. So I could just choose my state. I'm in the center of Ohio. Or I could take it even further and say, hey, only these zip codes, only if a customer has, you know, their shipping address has this zip code, does it become available? Now, for a cust uh, anytime we create a shipping label um, work or we mark an order as shipped, the customer is emailed a, um, the shipping confirmation with typically tracking if it's coming from ShipStation. Now, for a customer pickup, what we don't want to do is send them an email that says, hey, your order is on its way um, when they're expecting to be told, hey, it's ready to be picked up. So in this situation, come into email and order templates, email template. I can create a new shipped email. I can say, uh, I'll rename it customer pickup. The usage, I could choose use it only for customer pickup. Then I can customize the template. Your order is now shipped. No, your order is now ready to be picked up. The following items are ready to be picked up at. And then I would have your address and then also tell them, uh, Monday through Friday, whatever your hours are, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So anytime you're going to do a customer pickup, um, you're going to want to do one of two things. Either create a custom shipped email or the other option is I can come in here and just say, I just don't want you even to send it. We're just not even going to send it Um if the customer uh, chooses customer pickup, they just don't get an email. So that is another option. Also down here in customer sync, uh, what I can do is I can choose a shipping method to not go to ship station. So I can exclude customer pickup. It's not a big issue, but if I don't want it to go into ship station, very easy to do so. I also down here in the ship station order sync section, I can choose to send uh, order shipped email when using ship station uh, as well. Typically I would not have this checked. I would rather ship station send the email with the tracking. I don't need a double dip and send it twice from Deco and ship station. Okay, so again, uh, we went over to manage live carriers. We chose ship station. Once we've chosen ship station, we can choose the methods. Uh, so we'll choose the shipping methods from the different carriers. Once we've done that, we can then apply a markup, set their availability, and also the list order. I don't know how I turned off ground again. All right. So how do we connect ship station with deco network because all of this all that did that we've done so far it just made it possible for us to calculate a shipping rate so um just to do that again so now i can come into creating a quote you have to have a customer selected i must know where the order is going to be able to calculate a uh, shipping price so first class 505 if I chose priority, 948. And remember, this also has my markup of 20%. So back to ShipStation. How do we connect ShipStation with our Deco Network account? 
Well, we'll come over to selling channels, connect the store. It's going to be custom store. And the first thing we need to put in here is a URL. So where do we get this URL? Well, it's in the admin of Deco Network. So ship station order sync, grab it from here. This is the URL we need. Drop it in there. And then we need to put in a username and password that is a account um, within your Deco Network account. And so I forgot to do this. Let's create a new password. Save that. So shipping is the username, password, I'm not going to share. So let's let that update. Uh, something important to remember here. If you connect an account here using that username and password, and then later you forget that password and you reset it within Deco Network, you're going to kill the ship station connection. So just Try not to ever change the username and password that is linked to your ShipStation account. That's why you should be using like the first account that was ever created on your Deco network because you're rarely going to change it. All right, so let's go ahead and drop that back in. Shipping the password. And then for each of these last few steps, we're going to add SS underscore. So ship station underscore. And if you're wondering, how do I know all this? Well, I've done it many times, but Deco Network's help articles are very good. If I type in ship station, uh, ship station order sync, this help article walks me right through the same stuff. Select the store, where to grab the URL, why put SS in front of these things. Very self-explanatory. But before I click connect, I want to test the connection. Test connection successful. Very important that you do that before moving on. So connect. And it created new custom store. So let's edit this. Let's go ahead and call this master class shipping. Something else. Uh, I can do a lot of other things here. I can branding, you know, we could put in a company name. We could add a logo. There's a lot of different things you can do here. The big thing to remember is your Deco Network account will have one store in the eyes of ShipStation. I know that's kind of confusing, but there really is only one marketplace for all your Deco Network orders uh, coming in there. Okay, so how do we look up orders? Well you're going to live in this order section of ship station. And what's really important is to understand what these different statuses mean. On hold means that an order is in awaiting production. So if we go back to business hub, we come into production, awaiting production right here. These are orders that are on hold in ship station. Okay. If we're in the shipping section of Deco Network, it's going to be in awaiting ship shipment or shipping, um, waiting shipment of ship station. What what I would do is search everything at once. We're we're not going to search just awaiting shipment or just on hold. I want to search all orders. But before we do that, you've got to make sure that everything is as up to date as possible. So I'll update all stores. And if there's any um, new orders that need to flow over, they can. Okay. So let's go back to Business Hub. We have a quote here. And let's add a couple different items because I want to simulate a common situation. Let's say the customer has several items in the order. Some of them are going to ship earlier than others. So we're going to split the shipment. And th this can be a little complicated. So we're going to just make a fake order. 
we'll uh, save it. Well, actually, I made a quote. So now we'll turn the quote into an order and we'll raise a purchase order. Now, here's what I'm going to simulate. I'm going to only order, well, no, we'll order everything, but we'll we'll simulate the fact that something didn't arrive. It's being back ordered. We're, we're in that situation. So when I receive stock, I'm only going to receive the athletic. The sand is on back order in this example. So with that, if I go to production, part of this order is in awaiting, part of it is in not ready. If any part of the order is in not ready for production, it will not show up in ship station. So I'll look up this order number here in ship station. It's not going to show up. Okay. No matter what, because we have not, um, not the whole order, um, or at least either the whole order has to be in awaiting production, or if part of the order is in not ready, part of the order has to be in the shipment section. I know I'm probably confusing everybody right now. So let's just mark this as production complete. So if I mark that as production complete, now, part of the order is in not ready, and the other part of the order is in shipping because we're actually ready with it. So let's go back to ship station, update all stores. And we'll refresh. Got to give it at least a second. And if you notice, I'm in all search results. This is pretty important because you want to be in all search results. That way you don't, it doesn't matter if it's in a waiting shipment or if it's a waiting in production, you're going to be able to find it. But very important, if only part of the job is ready to ship, it needs to be in the shipping section of Hub for you to be able to then create that shipment. So let's say that again, we're going to ship part of this order. Well, what I want to do is actually over here in other actions, I can show split ship actions. And in this example, this athletic Heather is ready. This one is not. So that'll be the second shipment. This will be shipment one. This is important because if you, you know, this back ordered part of the order, if we go to create that shipping label, it won't actually be tied to the order unless I do this split shipment action. So shipment one is ready on hold. We'll click save. And now we can ship this one shirt. So you can see here, shipment one versus shipment two. Okay. Um, very good tip. At least I think it's a good tip is to use what are called presets. A preset allows us to save variables such as what's the ship from address, what uh, shipping carrier are we using, what type of package from that carrier are we using, are we using our own lengths and dimensions, are we using the weight. Uh, so we'll create a new uh, preset. So we'll manage preset, new preset, and let's just call this uh, 9 by 12 poly bag. Just as an example, we'll add shipping option size. Well, yeah, we know the shipping size. It's nine by 12, and then I'll say it's three inches thick. Uh, package and shipping service. So the shipping service, if I'm going to do a nine by 12 poly bag, it's going to go uh, post office, most likely to priority. It's a package. 9 by 12 by 3, ship from. And we're going to talk about that in a second. So I'm going to say it's shipping from this location. And then I'm going to let the weight come in naturally from Deco Network. You can see we already have the weight of 4.8 ounces here. So I don't want to you know, have that in the preset. I want Deco to send the customer's info. This is where it's shipping to. This is um, the weight. 
The only thing I really should have to be able to have to do is apply a preset, which then again, populates all the other variables. What we like to do in my shop as well, we do like to reweigh the items. Just, it takes no time. And if you can connect your scale to a uh, ship station, and then if you click this little scale icon, you can automatically have that weight update because you've already connected to it. Now, um, the ship from location, let's say that you have multiple affiliate sites and you want to white label it, or you want to use that site's name on the shipping label. So what you can do is come back here to the general settings. Um, we'll do ship from locations, new location. And I could say, okay, the Deco Network is actually the name. I don't want, I want it to be white labeled or I want it to be that store's brand. I can fill it out. I would still be using my same address. You know, it's still coming from my address, but I don't want my company name on it. I want somebody else's. What I've also seen with a lot of um, shops is to just make it completely white labeled. So instead of having, you know, company here, like mine is creative customizing. I could just call it, you know, t-shirts, just, just as white label blank as possible. That way nobody's confused when they get the order. Well, who the heck is creative customized? Well, it's a part of, uh, that fulfillment center. Okay. So let's go back to our orders. Let's go back to the one I created or look up the one because you could see here's our split shipment. I'll apply the preset nine by 12 poly bag comes up with the price. If I want to compare uh, the price, it's really not that hard to, okay, instead of the uh, priority mail, what is it going to be for UPS ground? This is what really makes ShipStation awesome is being able to change and get an instant difference in price also when it's supposed to arrive. So on my Deco Network account, I have everything, most of everything just says ground, ground shipping. It doesn't say UPS, doesn't say post office, because if I can get the package there quicker at a cheaper price, I'm going to. Um, at least with my customers, they're accepting of it. Not everybody's are going to be that way, but um, great to look at. And then also this ground saver also becomes really cheap. One thing I really learned with UPS or um, ship station is that their rates when you use their carrier connections are so much better. So if you need to connect your shipping carriers, you know, if you're getting new with uh, ship station, shipping carriers, you can connect your own carrier accounts. But I highly suggest looking at ship stations. And the way you should look at it is ship stations like a buying group. There are so many labels being bought through ship station through their master UPS account that their rates are so good. Um, it's hard to beat um, no matter you know how special UPS tells you you are and how great your rates are. They're probably not as good as ship stations. Another thing to keep in mind with ship station is it's kind of like a bank where we deposit funds into ShipStation or essentially stamps.com. And then as we buy a label, the funds are deducted. And once we run out, ShipStation will tell us, hey, we need to deposit more money so that we can keep uh, creating shipping labels. So again, let's go back to that order. We applied a preset to it. Um, we have our cost. Now I can click create and print label. So it'll purchase this from UPS. I can then download the label. I, I could have it go straight to my printer. There's a lot of different um, tricks here, but it really is that. I've literally bought the label and I have it set up so that as soon as I buy that label, the customer is emailed the tracking for the order. So another thing to keep in mind, come back over to the settings. You can format the email 
that is sent to your customers. So if I come over here to email templates, I can create new uh, templates for different situations, such as different ship from addresses. And you can see I can include the store name. I, there's a lot of different fields you can slip in here. Big thing to keep in mind, the store name is not your Deco Network store name. It is the name of the store within ShipStation. So like the first thing I did is anywhere I saw store name in my template, I took it out because that is not the store name from Deco Network. Okay. So you can manipulate the email template just like you can with the Deco Network one. Also coming back here, uh, document options within printing. So like I said, when I printed that label or I downloaded the label, I could have sent it straight to the printer uh, using ShipStation Connect. I could have had it download a PDF and then I, there's just all types of options. Uh, what's also common with shipping labels is to uh, print them with a packing slip at the same time. So if you want to simultaneously print the label and the packing slip, it's as simple as coming here and clicking this button. If you want to edit the packing slip, you absolutely can. If you want to, you know, view what it's going to look like, um, where are you? Packing list or packing slip. Uh, you absolutely can, you know, edit it to a degree. Okay, let me look at my list. Ship from address. Again, we want to white label it. Um, the labels, ship from location, create as many ship from locations. Uh, I would I could still apply that preset like I did. But when I, so I can apply this preset, nine by 12 poly bag. But you know what? I don't want creative customizing on the label. Uh, I want print phase to be on the label that easy. Uh, okay. We went through preset shipping email template, downloading the label with the packing slip, how to look up an order. Typically I would just, we always have our order worksheet printed out from Deco network it has the order number in the top left corner. That's how we always look up the job. We talked about how to do a split shipment. Let's talk about how to do a batch. Um, so I used to ship a lot of mugs every day, every day we'd wake up, um, come to the shop and I'd have 60 mug orders to ship. Well, every mug, every order was essentially one mug and it included, um, it's the sh same shipping weight dimensions and so forth. So do you know, just like in Deco Network's business hub, you have different columns up top here. And you can control what columns are shown by clicking on columns and choose, you know, the item that, that was uh, purchased or the shipping service that was selected, you know, when the customer was checking out. So there's all types of columns here. And then you can sort by the column, you know, sort by status, sort by order date, sort by quantity, uh, item. Uh, so again, item if I were back when I did a bunch of mugs, I, I would see 60 lines here of mug, 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 mug. And then I could select, you know, all of those orders that have the word mug in it. And I could then um, create a new batch for those items. And you could see some things aren't possible when an order has already been shipped, but I can uh, select it and then I can uh, create a batch and what that allow us to do is to buy and print all those labels all at once. Just makes it more efficient if you don't want to uh, create a label for each order one at a time. Batching batches are good, but sometimes speeding up the process opens up rooms for mistakes. So be careful when you do that. Uh, we talked about using weight from a scale that's been connected to ShipStation. We talked about looking at the price differences based on the shipping carrier. Um, once your day has ended, or let's say that your orders are ready to be picked up by the post office forever, um, 
you can come into shipments and you can select your orders and create a end of the day slip, which essentially summarizes everything that is being picked up. Uh, I can also request carrier pickups um, with the different shipping carriers that I have connected within ShipStation. And one other thing within Insights, we have reports. I mean, ShipStation is very powerful software if you haven't got that. There's a lot of settings you can go in here. We're just kind of grazing through it. But one report I do find interesting is uh, the shipping cost. So I can run a date range, you know, last month, how much did we spend on shipping for, you know, UPS? So we'll do stamps.com, UPS, just do priority or, yeah, we'll just do USP. How much did we spend in UPS priority and what's also really cool, so we spent eleven forty, but we charged the customer um, thirty. No, no, we charged the customer twenty one ninety six. We spent thirty three thirty six. So we lost eleven dollars and forty cents in this quick example. I couldn't tell you why, what we're doing. Um, I'll do all services. And again, you could see, okay, on this order, we made 38 cents off of it. it. And it just, again, gives you an idea of, are you making money from shipping? Are you losing money? Um, and some of these numbers will definitely be thrown off because you're offering free shipping potentially. It still costs you money. So that's going to be a red number right there. Um, but, you know, I'm more inclined to offer ShipStation nowadays because one you know, platforms like Amazon have made it kind of standard standard to think that, hey, you get free shipping at a certain price. And then secondly, the rates are so good in uh, ship station that I just work the cost of the label, uh, you know, the shipping into the price of the product uh, to pass it on. Nothing is free. There's no such thing as free. You're paying for it somewhere. All right, Colin, that's my rundown of how to connect uh, ship station so we can generate rates, how to connect uh, Deco Network to ship station, buy and print the labels, apply presets, split shipments, edit uh, labels, documents, emails within ship station.